you do feel that he left you hanging? Uh, to a certain degree, yeah. Have you ever wondered why the Prince of Pop, Justin Timberlake, is such a controversial figure in the black community? I mean, who could forget the 2004 Super Bowl incident when Justin accidentally exposed Janet Jackson's boobs? Although the incident was only for a split second on camera, you bet your ass it had everyone talking for months. The whole thing blew into a crazy mess and took Janet's career with it. Here is where you might think, hold up, I thought you said Justin accidentally exposed Janet's boobs. So why is it that her career took the fall? Do you think in any way that uh, Justin Timberlake left you hanging out there? Well, uh, th all the emphasis was put on me, not on Justin. And uh, just Justin, uh, we were friends. I'm very loyal and friendship is very important. Yeah, well, welcome to America. Now I bet you're thinking, hmm, he probably apologized several times to Janet, right? Nope. It took Justin 17 years to utter his first direct public apology to Janet. That's a whole teenager in between the incident and his apology. So is it just the jaw-dropping Super Bowl incident? Or are there more deep-seated reasons why JT is disliked by the black community? Grab your popcorn, guys, because today we're diving into the real reasons why JT went from hero to zero. With six Grammy Awards and more than 20 Grammy nominations, it's not even a question if Justin made it in his career. The dude is one big sensation, pushing out hits on hits such as Suit and Tie, Four Minutes, Dead and Gone, back to back for like two decades. So before all the spicy drama talk, why don't we take a trip into the life of one of the world's most successful singers? Justin was born in Memphis, Tennessee on January 31, 1981, to Lynn Bomar and Randall Timberlake. His cute, marketable face, coupled with actually being really talented, made it clear from an early age that Justin was meant for the spotlight. At age 11, Justin already stunned America with his boyish charm and magnetic voice, killing his performance of country songs on the TV show Star Search. Like, be for real, could you tell this face no? It was clear the kid was destined for stardom from the get-go, because just shortly after Star Search, Justin landed a role as a mouseketeer in the Disney TV show Mickey Mouse Club. Alongside other future megastars like Ryan Gosling, Christina Aguilera, and Britney Spears. They ended up dating years later, and their relationship was a nightmare, but we'll get to that. While the Mickey Mouse Club met its end in 1995, Justin's career just began. He went ahead to become the curly-haired heartthrob of NSYNC. And in case you're too young to know NSYNC, basically they were the One Direction of the late 90s and early 2000s. Well, by 2002, JT went full Zayn Malik and decided it was time to fly solo. And boy, did he take off. His debut album, Justified, was packed with hits like Cry Me a River and Rock Your Body. So to, Everyone was hooked. He was on top of the world, but as we'll see, the higher you climb, the harder you fall. Remember Britney Spears, JT's former co-star? How about we hop into the hot mess that was their relationship? For a while, Britney and Justin were Hollywood's power couple. Being so young, successful, and famous, it's no surprise that the duo caught the attention of many. I will get out of the way now. Both of them were killing it in the pop scene, so much so that the media dubbed them the pop prince and princess. But everything turned sour in November 2002, when Justin released his music video for Cry Me a River. So get this, the whole plot of the video is that JT finds out his girl is secretly cheating on him. 
I know, that's basically every pop song ever. But what made this video stand out, however, was that the model who played his cheating partner looked exactly like his real-life partner, Britney Spears. Now, Justin did refuse to give a name, but it was clear as day who the video was referring to. I mean, come on, you just happened to make that video with a model that looks like your girl around the same time we started getting breakup rumors? Coincidence? I think not. Besides, that video was just the beginning of Justin's taunts. For years, Justin kept on bringing up how Britney cheated on him and broke his heart. Yeah, right. Let's move on, Justin. Like in 2006, when he released What Goes Around Comes Around. Another song taking a jab at Britney. But that wasn't all. He also made reference to their private life, bragging about how Britney lost her V-card to him. Did you... Britney Spears. <laughs> yes or no? Oh, man. Come on, man. Okay, I did it. No. Yeah. So cringe. How condescending is that? He basically shamed Britney for years and painted her as the one who broke his heart. The world has long been full of Madonna wannabes, and I might have even dated a couple. Eventually... Let me just clear up this. The impression is that Britney did something very bad that hurt you. She had a relationship with somebody else. Was there an incident? Britney had it to her throat and finally decided to speak up. In her 2023 memoir, The Woman and Me, Britney addressed the backlash and negative media she received at the time and how it broke her. I had a lot of therapy to get this book done. Yes, she did kiss her backup dancer, but that was after Justin had cheated on her on multiple occasions. I think everyone has a side of their story um, to make them feel a certain way, to make them feel, you know, and I'm not technically saying he's wrong, but I'm not technically saying he's right either. And if you think that's bad, well then think again, because it gets worse. Justin literally forced her to abort their pregnancy even though she really wanted to keep it. The whole fiasco about being heartbroken by Britney's infidelity seemed to have simply just been a marketing strategy to promote his first solo debut. And it worked. Well, that's a trend you'll notice when it comes to JT. His MO was basically profiting at the expense of others, be it an individual or an entire culture, particularly African-American culture. Taking a deep look into the nitty-gritty of JT's music career, there's no denying the guy's got talent, but his success is deeply rooted in black music and culture, from his choice of fashion to how he styled his hair. I'm looking at you, Cornrow JT. His solo sound was a clear departure from the poppy NSYNC days, diving headfirst into R&B and hip-hop influences. JT even went as far as incorporating urban styles into his whole look. Bro thought he was Eminem. But here's the kicker. While Justin was racking up awards and selling millions of records, many felt he was exploiting black culture without giving due credit. His 2016 album, Man of the Woods, was a stark shift away from his R&B roots. But I'm a man of the woods, it's my pride. Leaning into a folksy country vibe, it felt like he was trying to reinvent himself, distancing from the very culture that boosted his career. Fans and critics called him out for this sudden pivot, questioning his authenticity. Let's not forget about the whole 2016 Twitter fiasco either. During the 2016 BET Awards, Jesse Williams gave an iconic speech on racial inequality and the divide it causes. This is not for me. This is for the real organizers all over the country, the activists, the civil rights attorneys, the struggling parents, the families, the teachers, the students that are realizing that a system built to divide and impoverish and destroy us cannot stand if we do. In response to the speech, JT tweeted, inspired by you, Jesse Williams, hashtag BET 2016. Sounds nice, right? But the Twitterverse wasn't having it. People clap back, pointing out Justin's history of benefiting from black culture without addressing systemic issues or using his platform for advocacy. One tweet in particular read, So does this mean you're going to stop appropriating our music and culture? And apologize to Janet, too? Hashtag BET Awards. And how did JT respond? Oh, you sweet soul. The more you realize that we are the same, the more we can have a conversation. Yikes. This dismissive response only added more fire to the flame. Yet, none of these crazy scandals made black people rage like the 2004 Super Bowl mess now dubbed Nipplegate. Sick, right. See, 
Stay with me on this one. So picture this. It's Super Bowl 38. The halftime show is in full swing and the crowd is pumped. Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson are on stage, killing it with their performance. It's all going great until, out of nowhere, JT sings, I'm going to have you naked by the end of this song and rips off a piece of Janet's costume. Boom! Her boob gets exposed on live TV for like a split second. Everyone and their grandma was like, did that just happen? The media tried their best to cover it up, calling it a wardrobe malfunction. But the fallout was insane. The FCC got over a half a million complaints. It was during the Super Bowl, and you have nudity on television, and there are FCC rules against indecent television. People in Congress were going nuts. You knew what you were doing. You knew what kind of entertainment you're selling. And you wanted us all to be a buzz here in this room and on the playground in my kid's school because it improves your ratings, it improves your market share, and it lines your pockets. The FCC jumped on its enforcement horse and uh, less than 24 hours had sent the CBS network a demand letter to investigate what had happened with Nipplegate. And it was the top news story everywhere. And then the real drama started. Poor Janet took the fall hard. CBS and MTV blacklisted her faster than you can say wardrobe malfunction. We reached out to the NFL to ask about, you know, who's going to perform at the upcoming Super Bowl, uh, you know, in, in Arizona that's coming up. And they gave us a statement. They said, as for potential acts, quote, we have only ruled out Janet Jackson. She's the only person that has been blacklisted. Talk about holding a grudge. Radio stations stopped playing her songs and she was even uninvited to the Grammy Awards that year. Can you believe that? Her album, Demita Joe, dropped not long after. But it didn't stand a chance. No radio play, no promotion. Basically, it was dead on arrival. And it wasn't because the album was bad. It's just that the industry had turned its back on her. Janet went from being on top of the world to being treated like a pariah. The media and public scrutiny was relentless. She was dragged through the mud, and it felt so unfair. I mean, she was the victim here. But it was the complete opposite for Justin. You know, it's it's an understatement to say that it was sort of unfair if you look, if you consider it 50-50. I mean, I probably got 10%. While Janet's career was going up in flames, JT was over here like, oops, sorry, and kept it moving. I don't take that to heart, but what I do take to heart in in the bigger picture of it is I'm a part of a community. I'm a part of a community that consider themselves artists. And if there was something that I could have done in her defense that was more that I could have realized than I would have. He issued a weak apology and distanced himself from the mess. And guess what? It worked. He went on to win two Grammy Awards that year, like nothing happened. Justin's career soared while Janet's plummeted. It was a clear example of white privilege at play. America's, you know, unfairly harsh on ethnic people. The black community was fuming. Janet, a beloved icon, had been thrown under the bus while Justin got a free pass. It wasn't just about the Super Bowl incident. It was about what it represented. A black woman was punished harshly. I am really sorry if I offended anyone that was truly not mine. While a white man skated by without any real consequences. This left a lasting bitterness. Many felt Justin never truly owned up to his role in the scandal. What's worse is Justin got reinvited to perform at the Super Bowl 14 years later, and guess what song was on his set list? Yup, Rock Your Body. The same song that ruined Janet's career. Talk about being tone deaf. Fans were outraged, to say the least. After a lot of backlash, he finally made a half-hearted apology to both Britney and Janet. Too little, too late. The damage was done, and the double standard was crystal clear. Fast forward to 2024, and Justin Timberlake's net worth is estimated to be around $250 million. His legacy may be tainted by scandals and accusations of cultural appropriation, but there's no denying his impact on pop culture. Despite all the drama, JT is still a force in the entertainment world, with roles in films like Palmer. How did you end up in prison? Don't matter. I did what I did. And Reptile. Get out! Plus rumors of a new album. Only time will tell if he can navigate the tricky waters of public opinion and cultural dynamics. 
from Mickey Mouse Club to NSYNC down to his countless pop hits, there is no denying that JT is a legend. To be honest, he might be a jerk with a ton of controversies, but we can't tune out his impact on the entertainment industry over decades. Let's face it, JT is an icon, but some of his antics over the years have left him on the naughty list of the black community. But what do you think, though? Does he deserve all the hate, or is he just misunderstood? I guess that's left for the fans to decide. If you love spicy Hollywood stories like this, check out our other videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.